and welcome along and welcome back to six ashes i am in my 7840 right now and we're heading down to the pit by field 56 um because just in here is our lime purchase point uh we have on the back our lime spreader the little lime spreader we bought which is uh which is a pretty good lime spreader actually did we buy this i think we ended up renting this uh because we're only going to be using it for today we've got two fields i think all right let's refill this and then we'll check so what have we got left to lime yes you can see here uh this is the nitrogen level so no there we go ph level is all good on field 11 field 10 though and uh well field 12 we kind of want to but we're, we're not looking at it at the moment so field 10 that needs uh liming so that's why we've popped up here grabbing a load of lime into this and getting back up to our main farm uh and the reason why we need to do that is we need to get the carrots in today so we actually have two days to get the carrots in but i want to get our first cut of silage uh off our grass field before the end of spring so we've got one more day to get that done uh, and so we need to get that rolling next day so today we need to lime uh, we need to slurry and we need to cultivate and we need to plant the carrots so it's gonna be a well-oiled machine to get all of those things done shouldn't take us too long to get this lime spread i don't think uh, so we're gonna head back up to the field get that start done and dusted quickly and then it's on to the slurry spreading as a result, this is pretty much the same race against time as we had last time. The difference is uh, that we're not actually that worried about uh, the, plow the, the second stage, the cultivating stage. Uh, that's because the cultivating stage on this uh is going to be a lot quicker than the plowing uh the plowing was one of those things that's that's always difficult to do and uh, a little bit annoying i think next year we might look at trying to replace our plow with a subsoiler it will be a quicker thing to do and we're not overly looking to do any field creation alternatively we might just see if we can get a, get, get a better plow uh that the t-dub can move a bit faster with it's uh it was one of those things that is just that little bit uh unhelpful for us so we uh we we need to we need to sort it really um this lime though this this little trailer is great for doing like a single uh single field so we're going to get uh this done and spread uh and we need to check if we have actually bought this I can't remember whether we bought this or whether we hired it last time. Uh, it is an absolutely fantastic piece of kit uh, and would fit in the, on the farm brilliantly. Uh, it would allow us to do a load of fertilizing across the farm in one fell swoop when we first, uh, when we first do it and that would make a massive difference. But uh, I don't know if we actually own it and uh, and therefore that is an option for us so we will find out in a bit and that should uh, that should work for us we've got the headlands done though and that will this cut out i don't think this is going to cut out no it does there we go it drops down to a very low level and then we turn around and we're going to get the rest of this field done it is roughly one width of uh, of this that uh, <laughs> that is uh, that the field moves to at the side. But anyway, let's get the rest of this field uh, covered in lime. It looks like the lime is going to do uh, most of the field, which is good news. Then we're going to get on with getting the slurry on here as well, and we're going to have to go and buy some for that. 
We're about halfway through the field and we got some really nice coverage now with the lime. Uh, we also got about 40% left. Now I think when I say halfway through the field, I think halfway through the main body of the field we got a little bit more than that uh, because of the headland that we did as well. So we should, with any luck, have enough lime to, uh, to get round the whole field. And, uh, yeah, we've got just sort of these two small patches left uh, here and uh, up at the top end. And this is where this field starts to get that little bit more interesting. You end up uh, sort of dividing into these two areas. So we're going to divide and do the top end here first. Get this little patch filled in. Uh, and then we're going to go and do the bottom area. Interesting that... My, my liming on this headland bit up here doesn't seem to have registered. And I'm wondering if I managed to not scan part of the field up here. Or whether it just didn't register in the scan. Because, yeah, look at that. That is... There's a definite section of the field up here that isn't covered by our precision farming scans. Which is a, a little bit weird. Right, now have we got everything up here? Yes, we have. The other thing I like about precision farming is you don't have to cover absolutely everything. It recognises that there's enough covered uh, that when you cultivate it in or, or drill it in or anything like that, that you're, you're going to spread this out a little bit. And therefore, the, uh, the small areas that, that you get at the end... And in wedges and things, it doesn't actually always cover those. And then you get bits like the small uh, small slithers we've got in the field that, uh, that get covered as well. I, I, I love that about it. It doesn't have to be a complete exact science. Uh, which is weird seeing as it is precision farming. But uh, you know what I mean. You know where I'm coming from with this. Uh, you don't have to go back... And get those tiny slithers that you miss. Or mostly don't have to. Uh, we do have this one on this headland here. But we'll, uh, we'll come back and grab that on this last turn. When we grab this corner bit. Yeah, look at that. Not having to cover those bits at all. And we're still left with 14%. Perfect. Perfect. That has got this covered. So, we're going to go and drop this off back at the uh, bit. And then, we're going to head back down uh, and grab ourselves some slurry from the horse paddock. Probably take a couple of loads of slurry on this, I'm thinking. Uh, but that's not too bad. Uh, we have our slurry spreader down here. And most of this today... Uh, well, the first bits of this, anyway, are going to be definitely in this tractor uh, to get this ball rolling. But what I want to do is get the cultivator going very, very soon after we get the slurry going. So if we can get a, a round of the slurry up done uh, and then get the cultivator following behind that... Uh, that will be uh, that will be good. So we'll get the T dub working with course play. So that is quite close to my baler. Never mind. Let's detach the PTO. Drop that off. We've got the cover on it, which is good. And when we come back, we'll get the T dub out of the shed. Get that into position, ready for us to get going. And I don't know how much slurry we have left in this. Can we get down that? Yep, yeah, there we go. Let's have a look. We have just over a thousand litres of slurry. So we'll go fill this up down at the uh, horses, down at the other stables. And it'll be about 250, I think, to refill this. Uh, and then... We can, uh, we'll come back up here and we'll get things set up ready for the next round of, uh, of work on this field. 
213 pound later and we have a full trailer of slurry so what i'm going to do is get us up to the field here get ourselves in position for uh spreading this so over here and then what i want to do is get the t-dub up here as well we'll see how far this tank of slurry goes i think we it's going to take us about two loads so there is a there is a run and back that we need to do but we kind of need to get the tw25 far enough ahead so when the cedar when we come in with the cedar with the uh the eight uh, 68 10 uh what we can do is get uh everything running uh very smoothly and uh, and we're a nice half a field ahead uh with the t-dub so it's yeah it gets this is where it starts getting that little bit more complicated to try and keep on top of everything we know it's going to take most of the day to get this all in but we need to make sure that we are all good for that so let's bring this up here around here the horse grass is looking good and we're gonna we're gonna be making some silage some horse silage off that this year so hopefully that will work fine all right but first turn off the t-dub there we go and let's get the slurry around the edge of this field so outside and away we go and we'll see how quickly this goes down and how quickly uh, it looks like we need to refill. If it's two if it's two loads on this, we should be okay. If it's three, I think we're going to be pushing things. Um, and what I will then look for, certainly next year, is probably trying to get some sort of uh, tanker set up that allows us to get this... It allows us to still use this Martian spreader, but at the same time also allows us to use the uh, the whole setup uh, properly, and uh, means we don't have to go and run down to uh, to refill this either from digestate at the BGA, which is our overall plan, or for us to go and. Uh, have to go down and buy slurry all the time look at this wow we are gonna run out of slurry before we finish the first headland this is definitely a multiple slurry tank uh <laughs> multiple fields this one uh which is not good for us that is gonna yeah that is gonna cause problems okay so I am going to need to do more than, well, looking at that, we're going to have a lot of trips. I think it might be time to try and look for an alternative to get this done. Uh, because at the moment, that the thing that's going to take us the most time on this day is going to be getting this slurry done. This T-dub is not going to be used for a while. We're on to our third tank of slurry now, and we've got a pretty good coverage. I think we may only have one more trip to do uh, after this one. So I uh, want to get this done. Uh, I think we're going to get the T-dub started off when we, uh, when we finish this. We've got most of the field covered now, which is good news. And that means that we're going to, uh, yeah, it's only going to be one more tank of slurry to get this finished. Which is a little bit better than I was expecting. I kind of thought that it might take us five tanks to get this done. But with most of this field done now, I don't think that the T-Dub is going to catch up uh, with where we are with this slurry spreading at the moment. Uh, so we can get that started. Uh, which is good because it's now half past 12 uh, in the day and uh, and we're going to be in a position where we're going to run out of time to get the carrots in if we're not careful. So let's bring this down here. 
we're going to go all the way down to the animal place and grab that. So four of these, uh, four eights are 20. F no, four eights are 32. So whatever we do going forwards, we kind of need 32,000 liters with that. But my thought is we'll get some sort of portable uh, version instead and, uh, and use that. Uh, to get this job done a portable slurry tank of some description right let's bring this up to here we're gonna get course play started so we want to start uh, there we go course generation field 10 and we want automatic I kind of want longest edge yeah there we go uh, bypass act skip rows no no headlands yes uh, we want three headlands clockwise up downs first turn in the corners and generate me a course now where this starts is going to be really important and you can see we're actually fairly good doesn't seem to have a lot of issues it, it kind of said that it might um, but I'm happy with that so uh, let's go back and our start point is over here now it's a slightly different angle as you can see to the one that we've been doing the other bits at so we want to get down and back as quickly as we can uh, because otherwise we're going to find we've got uh, area cultivated uh, before we can get the slurry on it. First waypoint, drive course, away that goes, and we've now got a race against time to get back with some more slurry. Let's get moving. Most of my work today has been driving back and forth to uh, to buy slurry. I'm just trying to get up here. We'll have to go across where we've been. That is not bad timing. It has only just reached the spot where we are uh, where we're doing the slurry. So that's good. Uh, a little bit over the top, and uh, and that covers what we hadn't already done uh, which I'm very very pleased about we've got a little bit left of the field to go but the uh, T-Dub now is doing uh, is doing that bit and that means that we're in a position where we should be able to get the carrots in and there is absolutely nothing stopping us now getting the carrots uh, getting the carrots in and sorted Let's bring up the map just so that we can double check. Yeah, we've got a nice, uh, good bit there. We have got a little bit of uh, an overlap, but it's okay. That's only going to save us a bit of money in the long run. And then we've just got this. We've got 70% left in this tanker to get the rest of this field finished. And then we can turn our attention to getting the carrots in which is uh, as I said which is absolutely fantastic because it means that we should get them in today and next time what we've got to do is uh, well we need to get slurry onto field 11a uh, and we need to get the uh, soybeans or we need to get it ready for the soybeans but we don't necessarily have to get uh, the slurry on to that field next game day we should be able to get everything sorted uh, we've got a minute so let's have a look at this so with the crops we've got left to get in are our carrots which uh, as you can see they need to go in today the temperature is right for them it's all good the, old, the other one is the soybeans, uh, which needs uh, 10 degrees on the ground in order to go in. We're currently looking at being... We're currently looking at being at that point 
fairly soon we're at eight degrees so yeah i'm expecting the uh, the ground to get up to uh soybean germination temperature next game day pretty much so uh yeah we're we're looking we're looking pretty good for where we are so let's get this back down to our shed and we can uh, we can then load up the 6810 with some carrot seeds which i think we now have if we don't then we'll use the uh the extra seeds or the different types of type of seeds i think we now have carrot seeds in the game i don't think we actually own any par pallets of carrot seeds and we do need to use up the generic seed pallets so we'll have a look at that so let's uh come around here and do those and we should have left i think we've left our pallet forks in here yep we have So what do we have in the way of seeds here? We have got, uh, so those are generic seeds. Those are oats, soybeans, and canola. No, so the one we're missing is the carrots. Uh, we do need to empty this, so empty that out. And that, has that emptied that? Oh, you beauty. That is awesome. So we had canola in here, but I'm just going to double check that it's not put it outside. No, it has. It's put it outside. Oh, I thought it emptied it into the canola pallet. Nope. The only place it had to go was uh, actually into the, uh, was actually outside the building. That's all right. We'll go pick that up. That was nearly very, very cool. But uh, we're going to take this outside so that we can then load it up with the carrot seeds so let's do that there drop it down open it up and then we can get these ones here unfortunately these don't stack which is uh, again a nice thing about the realistic seed mod is uh, is i can put the uh, if i put these on top or try and put this on top it'll restack the bags into a single pallet uh, these don't do that uh, which uh, it's a pity it'd be a really nice function if the game did that so refill that one like so and that's only 530 liters we do have a remaining pallet in here though of these seeds so we can grab these as well Somewhere in here is the pallet holes. So there we go. Another 500. So this isn't quite going to empty out this pallet, unfortunately. But it's going to get us most of the way there. Right. And there. And refill. Like so. There we go. Nice full trailer. Uh, we want to switch it over to carrots wherever they are there we go uh we'll hop out and turn off the other tray uh, other tractor that'll be fine there just gotta remember that that tractor is there when we come back later and uh and do a little bit of cleanup in the yard but the fact is we have uh we're, we're in a really good place We've got our field limed, we've got it, uh, we're getting it cultivated, and we're about to get the carrots in. Um, that is brilliant, absolutely wonderful. And we're going we're, we're to go and have some fun in the 6810 again, which is even better. So the way I'm going to do this is to basically try and stick to where the... Oh, tractor is turn it on and away we go yeah might cost us a little bit of seed doing it this way but uh, at least we know we'll get full coverage 
It's a little bit weird, though, seeing the uh, potato uh, texture coming out of the back of this cedar. We're about halfway through the field. Uh, we're catching up to the T-Dub, which seems to be on a slightly different angle to me, which is which is weird. Um, I don't quite know how that's happened. Uh, it's... Uh, and you'll see what I mean as we get down the far end of the field. You can see that while this width is widening, the actual line at the end of the field kind of matches up with us. So we are... So you can see it's it's been at a slightly different angle, but you get to the end, and the angle is it's not off what we've just seeded. So it's a little bit weird from that point of view. I don't quite know how we are on a different angle at one end of the field and not at the other. Um, but we are catching up rather nicely. It seems to be a lot less uh, stressful doing the carrots today uh yes it's taking a similar length of time it is 10 past five but uh we get we seem to be getting them in at a fairly good rate uh, i'm now trying to i'm looking at the way that it's planting that and i'm just trying to correct this angle a little bit hopefully that's going to be absolutely fine um but yeah it's uh it's a bit of a weird one but we, as I said, we're halfway through the field. We're going to have to slow down in our 6810 a little bit now uh, because uh, we are catching up. And uh, and I don't want to be in a position where uh, too much of what I'm seeding is getting removed. So let's... Uh, we're gonna we're gonna slow down with 6810 for a bit let the t-dub get ahead again and uh, then we should be all good we're coming up to the end of the field and you can see yeah oh uh, there we go the t-dub has headed off uh, I am going to get one more row done and then we'll uh, we'll go and join it going around the field. It's going to have a slight overlap so it is going to cause uh, a little bit of what we've planted to be removed but that's okay. Uh, that was always expected. We've still got nearly half of the seed left so uh, while there's a little bit of an excess cost what we are doing at the moment is pretty much everything that uh, we've done in this single day. We do over like four different days. And going into this year and, uh, and, and getting ready for the next, what we need to do is make sure that we have... Uh, that we give ourselves enough time to, uh, to do the slurry or, or to do the fertilising... Um, to do, and to do the cultivating, we shouldn't need to lime again this year. I think we're in a in a good position for that. Um, but uh, yeah, we do need to uh, make sure that we're good. Otherwise, there we go. So yeah, you can see now that we're having a little bit of an overlap, um, which is not. A bad thing at all. It's going to make some interesting shapes. I'm very much not sure about the uh, the texture we've got here for the carrots. It's it's a little bit of a weird one. I kind of wish that uh, that there was a new texture for seeding the carrots, maybe, or or just something that that you know doesn't look like you're planting potato rows off of. Uh, off of this so yeah let's get this round and get this sorted and uh, yeah two more rounds and this field will be done
It's nearly 9 p.m. at night, just coming up, and the T-Dub has finished and left the field. We are just coming up to the end now. The carrots are in. What a mammoth job this has been. But we have been a well-oiled machine. We have gone from liming to uh, doing the initial fertilizing to getting the field cultivated to finally getting the field seeded the carrots are in and the start to this bad year this this cold horrible year uh has been overcome we have got uh, a little bit more work to do. We need to get the soybeans in yet, but we've got a couple of days for that. Also, we can start making some money from our silage, uh, which will be even better from our grass fields that we've got. Um, but that is for next time. For now, we're going to leave this here. So all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, drop us a comment, and give it a share. And for all the latest videos from Virtual Farmer, please subscribe to the channel ring that bell and i will see you next time goodbye